This video shows how to repair T-Jet solenoid boom valves on an agricultural sprayer. The valves are on this 200 gallon sprayer. There is one for the left, center, and right sections of the boom and are controlled by this standard T-Jet controller. After two years of use, we began having trouble with them turning on the boom sections. At first, tapping the valves would open them, but finally, the problem became worse. If the valves are not working properly, the problem could be electrical, the solenoid not getting enough current, or a mechanical problem inside the valve. When you remove the valves, check the wiring and connections closely. Recall that if a T-jet harness is being used, the right valve uses the orange wire, the center yellow, and left is green. After the valves are disconnected, it's a good time to check the voltage. With the tractor running, you should get well over 12 volts. If the voltage was okay, it's time to look inside. You can leave the valves joined together. Here is a parts diagram. First look at the outer pieces pointed out by the magenta arrows. Number 5 is the coil assembly. Number 8, the upper diaphragm housing. Number 16, the main body and number 20, the lower diaphragm housing. Then the parts inside. The metal parts act as a piston. What is important to note is this screws together in two places. The armature screws into the stem, blue circles, and the stem screws into the piston, yellow circles. Where these screw together, you can see the diaphragms and washers are incorporated in the assembly. T-Jet makes a repair kit for these that includes the diaphragms, washer, and spring that come standard or for a little more of the more chemically resistant biton. By removing these four screws, you can open up the valve. Here you can see the parts loosen. To the left, the coil, the upper diaphragm housing, the main body, and on the far right, the lower housing. Lift off the lower housing and you will see a screw and the lower diaphragm. Pull off the coil and you will see the armature. By holding the armature, you can remove the screw. You can see this armature is badly rusted. There was also a lot of loose, rusted debris, no doubt the cause of the problem. Notice the armature is held in place by a retaining clip. The armature is removed by unscrewing it from the stem. This shows all the parts. Notice the washer and spring for the armature. The arrow points towards the second diaphragm and the joint of the stem and the armature. This shows the stem unscrewed from the armature. There is a replacement in the kit for the washer shown. The armatures are steel with a nickel plating. These need to be replaced, but we clean them up to reuse until new parts arrive. Now the valves can be reassembled using the new diaphragms, washer, and spring. Notice the washers are marked with the side towards the fluid. Remember to clean the connections well and apply some dielectric grease when you reassemble. Before putting the valves back on the sprayer, it's worth the time to bench test them. When you apply voltage, the piston should move up and down smoothly a small distance. The valves work fine on the bench and on the sprayer. A 60 acre field was sprayed and all went smoothly.